welcome to another edition of Doorstep History here on Big Centre TV. Today's guest is Sissy Stone, who is best known for winning the popular TV talent contest New Faces, which first aired on ITV in 1973 and was hosted by Derek Hobson. New Faces was filmed at the ATV Centre in Birmingham and had a successful run of six series in the 1970s prior to being revived for another three series in the 1980s. Sissy Stone's victory on the show soared her to the status of household name and she is a legend in her own right across the Midlands. So, without further ado, here she is talking to our very own Des Tong about her life and accomplishments. My guest this week is singer-songwriter Sissy Stone. Hi Sissy and welcome. Hello Des. Now, I'd like to take you right back to when you were growing up in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. What was it like in the 60s? Well, it was fabulous, really. It really was. I, uh, I grew up in, in uh, Highgate Road in Sparkbrook, and my dad had a barber shop there, and I worked in Perk Supermarket, which was an incredible place to work. And um, then my dad just moved up into Ladypool Road, which was a bigger shop, and everything went fine for him from there. So. Did you think you were going to be a singer in those days? Well, I always wanted to sing from days at school. And um, when I was in Perk Supermarket, my best friend, Margaret Shepherd, uh, we used to go to the Sydenham Disco, which was in Small Heath, Golden Hill Road, every Friday night. And uh, it was just soul music. It was incredible. And uh, I thought, I want to do this. So um, I did. And, well, how did you get into it? Well, I used to go into a little pub uh, it wasn't that little, it's, it was the Bear in Spark Hill and there was two lads, one was playing piano and one was playing drums and they used to do a little Beatles medley and uh, one night they called, can anybody come up and sing this song and I said yes and I did and they offered me a, a job <laughs> so I, I did it for a little while and then uh, I left Perks and thought well I'll start my own band, put an ad in the local the paper and um, formed a, a band called Body and Soul. So, what were they, a soul band? Uh, th yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and did you start, you know, did you gig around? We did. We used to do the, uh, the Bull's Head on Coventry Road, which was run by uh, Doc Holliday. I'm sure a lot of people will remember Doc him. Holliday, he was yeah. incredible. Yeah. He was a great DJ as well. And then we used to do the Mermaid, which was on Stratford Road, and loads of little pubs don't dotted around the Stratford Road, Ladypool Road, and then up to Mosley Road, and the Black Horse on the Stratford Road, we used to do that as well. Right. And they were the, they were great venues, you know. So, what, um, are, you, are you still in touch with any of the guys? Well, um, the other singer in Body and Soul, Harry, he, um, he's now a male nurse at the City Hospital in Birmingham. Right. Yeah, so uh, I haven't seen him for some time, but I, I do know that he's, he's there, yeah. If you're watching, Harry. Harry. Get in touch. <laughs> and so, so, what happened next? Well, from there, um, I joined a band called the John McFlair Band, which were a, 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 a local Birmingham band. And their claim to fame was they always worked with the Drifters and what have you. I, yeah. I remember the John McFlair yeah. Band. So, uh, in actual fact, I met Dennis the other week. Oh, did you? I did indeed. Oh, yeah, Dennis. Goodness. Hello, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> Um, and we decided then that we would audition for New Faces and they held the auditions at La Dolce Vita, which was in the centre of Birmingham, Small Greenway, yeah, if you remember yeah, that. Yeah. La Carna was on the opposite side and yeah. we did it in there. And lo and behold, we got a letter saying, yes, we're through and we did it and we won it, which and is in incredible. And in actual fact, <laughs> here is the very statue. My Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> you won. And... Um, where does it, does it have pride of place in, in the uh, Stone household? Yes, it does actually. It's a doorstop between the lounge and the hall. <laughs> it's it's very good. Went. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, after New Faces? Uh, when I won New Faces, then I was signed by Decca and uh, the John McFlair band, the, the Sissy Stone band, as it was then finished, and I became a solo act for Decca. And I had a single out called Gone But Not Forgotten, which did quite well and is, is still quite a... a and here it is, yes. the actual thing. Um, it, <laughs> I believe that these now go for £30 on eBay. They do. Um, it's, yeah. it's like a 
Northern Soul Cult. It is. Record. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's amazing. amazing. Unbelievable. And yeah. uh, and on YouTube. I've seen it on YouTube. Yeah. Lots, of, lots of people yep. play it. Um, so, song. what happened after Decca? Uh, Decca, that, well, they sent me to America and I worked with uh, Marvin Gaye, uh, Irma Franklin, Millie Jackson, some great people in mm. LA. Mm. And then I came back and um, the, the actual pop side of Decca folded. So, we were all made redundant. So I put the band back together and then we, we went on the road and, and I, toured I believe, everywhere. Uh, I believe you had quite a, a well-known personality in that band. We did. Our keyboard player uh, was Jerry Dammers, who went on to form Two-Tone Two -tone Records. Records. Wow. Yeah, and Jerry was an amazing man to work with, a real character. We had loads of fun. Really and, I, and, I, and I know when, when you were out on the road in those days, um, the, the venues that you played, because um, I was with The Real Thing at the time, and uh, everywhere yeah. we played, you'd either been before well, us... That's right, or just... Or, or we were coming after you, you. yes, us. yes, we were. So, I mean, round the Midlands, what, we got Barbarellas? We got Barbarellas, oh, amazing. Uh, Rebecca's. Rebecca's, yeah. What a place that was. The Cedar Club. Uh, Squires. Squires Country Club. Yeah. Uh, coming over to Wolverhampton, we did um, Lafayette, Lafayette in Wolverhampton. Yeah. Chesford uh, Grange. Chesford Grange, what an amazing venue. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, Stone live Manor. music, Stone Manor, great Stone place. Manor. If, and packed, if, um, if, packed every night. If anyone uh, watching has got memories of those places, mm. photographs, or, or, or even you just got stories you want to tell, um, you should get in touch with us. Mm. Uh, it's very easy. You can email us. We're at history at bigcentre.tv and, and we'd love to hear from you. So, okay, after all that, I'd think anybody in the right mind would put their feet up and, and, and relax and, and have a good time. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing now? Uh, well, I've just done a new album, <laughs> <laughs> which comes out in September. Uh, amazing producer and arranger, Dee Martin, who's done such a wonderful job for me. And uh, it's coming out in September. Right. So I've got live venues lined up to do with the band is sensational. It really is. So, well, so I, I should so imagine that we'll be we'll be seeing you on our on our What's On program. We'd love, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Good lord, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And be looking out for that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks to my guest Sissy Stone, and if you have any memories you'd like to share of the places we've been talking about, you can email us at history at bigcenter.tv, and we'd love to hear from you. So join me next time when I chat with another legend of Midlands music.
That was great stuff there from Des and Sissy. Stay tuned in next week for Des, who will be bringing us many more musical legends from right here in the Midlands. We're just coming up to a break now, but after the break you can see some of Mike Prince's interviews with two of many individuals with great history behind them from right here in the Midlands. So, join me after the break where I will also be telling you about an interesting new section coming to Doorstep History 2. I'll see you shortly. Welcome back to Doorstep History with me, Tom Wilkinson. Now, history isn't just what you can see and touch, but also the memories and stories told to us by our elders. These stories are a rich tapestry which can tell us all about our region and how it has developed over their lifetimes. Here at Big Centre TV, we love to hear about these stories, and just to give you an idea, here's two fascinating people who have appeared on Mike Prince's life stories recently. Welcome back to Life Stories, where I'm in conversation with Ethel Late, a remarkable 94-year-old who started her nursing career at the tender age of 19 during World War II, when she nursed badly injured soldiers from battle. Do you remember the day when Neville Chamberlain announced that Britain was at war with G Germany? Did you hear that iconic radio broadcast? Yes, I was at church, and it was 11 o'clock in the morning when uh, it was announced and, you know, we, we were all told uh, straight away and um, the, uh, whoever was the leader, you know, said, I think everybody should go home now. So I went home, which was only just a few yards away from the church, and uh, most of the people in the village were all congregating around, you know, and saying the war started, we, we've got to, and we had to get the black hurt, they'd already been round, you know, telling everybody to get blackout curtains and um, everything and the, uh, the uh, children were there getting ready with their uh, brushes to pretend they were like the land, the dad's army. Oh, dad's army, yeah, yeah. The, the home And they, they were all around, you know. So it wasn't long before you were at Burntwood Military Hospital just outside um, Litchfield. So, was there much training or, or were you thrown in at the deep end? To, well, to... Um, I was working at the Manor Hospital at training and uh, I remember that I was on a men's ward and there were just, you know, uh, ordinary illnesses like pneumonia and things like that. And, um, but I belonged to the, I joined the Civil Nursing Reserve, which meant that if there was a war, I would have to go into a military hospital. Well, Burntwood was the nearest, so of course I had to leave right away, and uh, and I went to Burntwood. But and here you are as a as a nurse. You're just outside. The, and uh, yeah, the those Nissen are the huts. Nissen huts, which were the wards, but uh, the hospital was built in the grounds of the St Matthew's Psychiatric Hospital. Back a second, though, it was at the military hospital where you met your future husband in a rather unusual setting. Now that was, uh, well, um, he was called up, well, you know, conscripted into the Royal Navy and into the fleet air arm in um, November 1939. But, but you then did incredible service all through the war years at the Burntwood Military yes. Hospital. I know that you looked after hundreds of soldiers who yeah. returned from battle. Um, here you are as Nurse Ethel there, and I mm -hmm. understand that some of the matrons were quite strict at Burntwood. One matron, yes. One matron in particular. Mm -hmm. So no names, no pack <laughs> No. And, um, and so as, as the years go through the war, I know you saw the bombing in Birmingham, you, you did some work down in in Starbridge yes, as, as well. Uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, having to learn a bit of midwifery because we were having the um, women from the forces uh, being brought to the hospital. What? Expecting a baby? Yes. 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 OK. Yeah. So it was a big learning curve and everybody was learning and growing up very quickly That's right, in, yes. in, in all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm. And if you look back now, Ethel, through those incredible times, and I know that you then went into the dentistry after the war. 
you grew up very quickly. You yeah. met Albert, your husband. What's the, the biggest memory, the most memorable moment from those war years? When he came back, I think. When Albert uh, came yes, back? Yes, because, uh, I mean, our wedding was all arranged for May the 26th, and it was the day that we had the first convoy from Dunkirk. And instead of being a happy day, that was the worst day of my life. Now, most people at the age of 80 would be putting up their feet, slowing down, and enjoying the contentment of retirement, and who would blame them? But not my guest today. Instead of the easy life, he chose the perilous pastime of wing walking as a charity fundraiser following the death of his wife, Isabel. And now at the age of 95, Tom Lackey has flown into the history books and set an amazing 11 world records, and there are more pending. This daredevil, who is wheelchair bound, is lifted onto the top of the plane by a cherry picker and flies at 1500 feet, reaching speeds of up to 90 miles per hour. And he is set to take to the skies again soon, in fact, this September, uh, across the Channel Islands. So now, on Live Stories, we meet the fearless grandfather who has helped to raise over a million pounds in charity. A very warm welcome to Tom Lackey. Tom, now you didn't start this wing walking until you were 80. Uh -huh. but, uh, what keeps you going? What, what is it that, you I mean, do you have three, three bowls of cereal at breakfast time um, or what? No, no um, I suppose the answer to that would be um, a good red wine. <laughs> Not at breakfast, though. <laughs> so have you always been full of adventure and daredevil antics? Yes, I think I've always... Um, I, I like a challenge and I hate the word you can't do this and you can't do that. Um, I've always been a bit of a rebel, I suppose. And uh, if they tell me it can't be done, uh, I think oh, I'm going to do it. Well, as we were coming into the studio, you, you told me that you've been in trouble a few times in oh, your yes. life. So I'd like to hear... A few things that you've been up to. Uh, Is your late wife, has your late wife been an inspiration to you for the charity fundraising and, and the wing walking? Uh, yes, although the um, funny thing is, the reason I did it really, my wife was in her later years, um, she was 77 when she died, but she always said to, to me, Tom, uh, don't do the, you, you can't go flying anymore, you know, give up these silly things you want to do, because I was always still mad on flying or doing something daring. And uh, so she said, you're not capable of doing it. And funny enough, when she died, I, it, it struck me so hard that I thought, well, I'm going to prove to her now that I can do it. Let's turn the clock back, Tom back to 1920. You were born in 1920 in Aston. Yeah. What was it like growing up in Birmingham in the 1920s? Well, uh, it was, um, I remember the back-to-back -back houses and I can remember a lot of poverty people, yet it was a happy time somehow and um, I we had a very happy family. My father was a businessman, he was a builder. And uh, he's really, really happy, actually. I was always getting myself fit, I believe, keeping myself fit. So you ended up in the army and you were trained as a commando. That's right. And you went on raids, or, and, and you went on a raid to Norway, didn't you? That's right, just on a simple raid. It was a propaganda raid, really. Um, and what they call a nuisance raid. So part of your, part of your story and hearing you talk um, earlier today there is that um, rebel spirit in you. Oh yes, definitely. I would definitely call myself a rebel because um, I don't know, it ties up really well with the thing that I'm doing today because uh, I mean, I took up uh, flying again straight and level. I got fed up with that and I decided then I wanted to do aerobatics, which is loop in the loop, battle rolls, stall turns, um, everything. And I've done every uh, stunt now that the CAA uh, say you must do to get this badge, which is the uh, Extreme Aeros. Those are some great stories there from Ethel Lent about her nursing days during World War II and Tom Lackey about his life 
and proving that age is just a number. These are the kind of stories that we're always looking for here on Doorstep History. So if you or a family member have any stories to tell, then please contact us on Twitter at Big Centre TV, Facebook at Big Centre TV, or on our new email address, history at bigcentre.tv. I look forward to hearing your stories from the days gone by. Now that's just about all we have time for this week, though tune in next week for an exciting look at what life was like for the Anglo-Saxons back in the old Kingdom of Mercia, as well as what happened when the Vikings came to plunder and pillage across England and even the Midlands itself. We also welcome back Chris Perry with his look at a hidden gem of television history on Broad Street in Birmingham, and Des Tong brings us another legend of the Midland music scene. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on Doorstep History.